I'm Kathy Johnson, and welcome to Town Talk. I have a guest today, uh, uh, Terry Murphy. Uh, welcome, Terry. Thank you. Very much. Um, and I also have some other little guests with me today. And if you see on the table here, we have uh, several little birds. Uh, I love birds. Uh, but my favorite one on the table today happens to be the hummingbird. And we're going to talk about these little birds and why they're keeping us company on this table. So I'm going to ask you to introduce yourself and say a little something about um, who you are, why you're here. My name is Terry Murphy, and I got very concerned a couple of years ago about the loss of vocabulary. I think children are losing vocabulary at an astonishing rate of speed. Studies have been done that show that children in lower socioeconomic circumstances have, uh, I think it was like, the study said something like five million less words by age five, which I thought was wow. excessive, but even if it's a fraction of that, it's just not right. So I was concerned about my grandkids, and I decided one day, and I really, I don't know where I came up with this idea, it just came out of nowhere. I took a little bird, and I put it into my grandson's mailbox, and I scrolled up a little note the way a bird would if a bird was going to write a note, and it looked like little, it looked How like cute. bird scrawl, it was really fun. And it said, hi, I'm the word bird, and I've planted my nest in your mailbox. You can expect I will arrive often with powerful choices for you. The more words you know, the more places you'll go, your life will take flight with the power of words. And um, oh. yeah, and so then every week I started sending him, and this was so much fun. I was writing words and stories. We know that children learn vocabulary within the context of literature. It's very difficult just to study a definition. So I started sending just a word a week with a little story taught by a group of birds called the Tweethearts. The and Tweethearts. The tweethearts. It's oh. really fun. It's really fun. And it just, we tried to give them, you know, something reach words, not something that they already knew. Mm -hmm. um, and he really enjoyed it. And then the neighbor heard about it. And then the neighbor asked me to do it. And then a friend of mine had school-age kids. He goes, send it to my kids. And the next thing you know, I started a website called Word Bird Delivers. Mm -hmm. And I started sending this out to kids all over the place. And I developed a little, a little box that they can decorate themselves. And then that's the bird that comes with it. And for a year, they oh, get a little nest. Well, isn't that fun? And then I st because I just was having so much fun with this, I developed a little, um, a little book called The Word Bird Delivers, The Eight Parts of Speech. And we used the tweet hearts to tell them we've got Nathan the noun, Vivian the verb, um, Purple Martin the pronoun, and one of the birds goes missing. One of the parts of speech goes missing, and they have to go find it. So one of the that, parts uh, of speech, speech goes oh. missing, yeah, and then the children have to go look for it in that. So that's fun. We send that. I try to send, you know, not just the words every week, but something a little different. Um, I get excited about, about words, and we send them quotes. Uh, for example, uh, by words the mind is winged slovenly language corrodes the mind and this is my favorite change your words change your world and that's really true because we we set children up for success when we give them a strong rich and diverse vocabulary so that's how this all started well you know that's that's great uh, Terry uh, uh, I think that uh, communication skills are very important in this world today uh, <clears throat> to uh, uh, be correct grammatically, mm -hmm. to, to um, present your, it, it's the first thing that people notice about you besides how you're dressed to begin with, but also when you open your mouth. Mm -hmm. uh, you can be a very brilliant person with a very high IQ, mm -hmm. but if they realize that you can't communicate, yes. they dismiss you. The words Com you choose are powerful. You're yes, they right. are very powerful. So. Um, uh, we've got these little birds here. Uh, now, you, uh, you, um, you mentioned uh, your sister. My sisters, the, my sis, my whole family. This we're really kind of a wordy group of people. It started with my dad. My dad's a disc jockey, so to him, words were very important. And when I was growing up, I thought everybody focused on vocabulary the way my parents did. But my dad used to play. Reader's Digest says it, it pays to enrich your word power, and we would we would compete. All of us had to do that, and we enjoyed doing it. Dad won every time. Back in the day. Um, Parents didn't let their kids win at everything, and my father would challenge us, and he would he would win, and our goal was to, to be able to beat him in It Pays to Enrich Your Word Power. And I right. have to tell you a story. My dad is really a funny guy. Um, one time, it was a Sunday morning, I didn't go to church, and dad came home, and he said to me, well, it's a good thing God is ubiquitous. And I said, ubiquitous, what does that mean? And he said, present everywhere. He goes, like, God is, is present everywhere. He goes, can you think of anything else that's present everywhere? And I said, 
air? He goes, very good, very good answer. He goes, air is present everywhere in this atmosphere on this planet. That's very good. And he goes, can you think of anything else? And I wasn't feeling well, so I said, no. And he said, you know what else is ubiquitous? I said, well, he goes, your mother's relatives. They're in my <laughs> guest room, they're in the kitchen eating my food. And I thought, I thought it was funny. My mother was not nearly as amused as my father was, but it really sealed it in for me, the word ubiquitous. And my dad used to tell us stories like that all the time to get us to remember words. And, you know, and I can, I can see that he was a very entertaining person. He I can see. He still is. Uh, yes, uh, he's still with us. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's yeah. wonderful. Um, uh, he was probably of the same generation my parents were uh, from. Um, uh, I, I'm a baby boomer, so he was probably the World War II generation. Or uh, he's 86 now. Yeah. And my mom does crossword puzzles all the time, so we're a very wordy family. Very wordy. I can relate to that. Those mm -hmm. that know Kathy Johnson uh, know she's very wordy. I have to control myself. I love that about you. You and I could filibuster. We could fi we could <laughs> filibuster on the uh, on the Senate floor. If they need a filibuster, we could just we'll go in and do it. Give and, us a glass of water and we're there. And have no problem yeah. whatsoever. Absolutely. So, uh, so now we've got um, uh, uh, the word. What was that? Again? Word bird delivers. Word bird delivers. Mm -hmm. So and it so was fun. so these little birds. And we fly around uh -huh. and deliver words. Yeah, yeah, the, and yeah. The, the the bird itself shows up the first time, and then from there on, it's it's the words, and then all the kind of fun things. So like the first thing that comes comes like to that. the children mm -hmm. in their mailbox yes. is mm -hmm. the little bird with the note. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then how does it progress from there? Um, every week they get another word. Um, that they might not know and I'm hoping that that parents a lot of parents have written to me and said this is absolutely wonderful and it gives us you know a springboard to talk about words and vocabulary and they have a good time and kids love getting actual mail instead of something on a screen because everything right now is on a screen so that's right this actually comes with a stamp on it and everything it's very old-fashioned it's kind of quaint I guess at this point so so this in a way can can dovetail off their their regular studies Yes. Uh, and and this can only reinforce in a fun way, mm -hmm. just like the magazines that come out for children about animals, mm -hmm. things like that. This can reinforce uh, just what they're learning in school in a fun way, mm -hmm. and and have a little pet bird. How yes. cute! Yes, and I it keeps them to the. And I I've, I've donated this to the Ansonia school system because, like we we talked about, it's it's extremely important that every child have you know the opportunity to have a full. Um, and rich diver. I was in the grocery store one day in Ansonia, and this little boy looks at me and goes, you're the word bird lady. I, the I word bird I, I, lady. I knew what it was like to be famous. I felt really excited oh, to well, be famous. Oh, well, well, word well bird lady. That, that's great. Yeah, great. Uh, most of the time, people who know me, uh, it, it's because I'm infamous and not famous, but that's all right. <laughs> well, I could be known by a lot of things, yeah, so word so, bird lady but is anyway, a good one. Um, uh, so, now, uh, the uh, the regular progression is that the little bird comes first, mm -hmm. and then uh, and then they get something every week, and and they get additional things like yeah, I send out the book. There's puzzles that talk about the eight parts of speech because while we have your child's attention, we want to give them a little bit more. I send them quotes about about words, and um, I also send them bird information because I think if we can turn kids into birders it makes them more introspective. They get off the screen for a while, get off the couch for a while, and go outside and, and the interest in birds. And as you know, the health of the planet is very much tied to the health of the birds. Well, and I, I'm sure the Audubon Society is, mm -hmm. enjoys that. Yes, I mean, do. my husband uh, is vice president right now of the Oxford Land Trust, and, uh, oh. and, and he has been a member of the Oxford Land Trust uh, for a lot of years mm -hmm. uh, for open space. And there, we're all we're always promoting open space and watching nature and and keeping a habitat for birds and and such. Uh, uh, Our survival depends on it. You uh, know, it's not like we're doing something. I mean, we're doing something for animals and the planet, but as as a species. Well, <laughs> you, you know, it, I, I'm sure it's they pollinate flowers. They yeah, they go from thing to thing, and and so do the bees and all that. Mm -hmm. the nature is so very important to everything. And they're we gorgeous. Do. I mean, have you ever looked at nature? I mean, I love Audubon.org because the, you do. The, yeah, the birds are just and amazing. and these birds are so very colorful. I I want to. I, I can't resist. I can't resist. You see, I've picked the hummingbird. I'm going to ask my husband, our engineer. Uh, who I aggravate on a daily basis <laughs> to to show this little hummingbird because I guess what what did you call the hummingbird? That's toots. 
This is Toots. Toots. Toots the hummingbird, yeah. And, 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 and in the books, she likes to wear, um, you know, in the, because I have a fun time, I really make up crazy stuff about these birds, but she wears high heel shoes. Well, you see, that's it. Anybody that knows Kathy Johnson, even if her back is killing her, is in high heel shoes. That's awesome. So, 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 and she's very colorful. She's beautiful. Yes. So I have attached, even before I knew Toots's story, and even her name, Toots is what I picked out to hold up to the camera. And I want you to hear, Toot, Toots has something to say, so that she, oh, you want me to keep my mouth shut and you have something to say. Let's see if I can get you to talk. That's Toots. I hope you all heard that. And now, enough of me and Toots. We'll go back to, no, to, to Terry. Okay. Terry, um, uh, what else would you like uh, people to know about, um, uh, now they get each one of these, they, they get a bird a month, right? Well, that's for the, um, the Healing Chickadee program. Oh, we'll but talk I about tell, Healing yeah, Chickadee. Well, we'll see but um, I have to tell you that Wild Republic creates these. This is, these are Wild Republic Audubon birds. And each one of them, actually, this is their authentic sound. So that's the sound that a robin makes. And, oh, and let's yeah. hear, and what's that one? This is um, the Western Meadowlark. The Western Meadowlark is known for having one of the most beautiful songs of all the birds. So that's yeah. the actual sound. Yeah, of, of the I birds. I want to hear the owl. The owl. This is the snowy owl, which um, is really beautiful because he's got yellow in his eyes. And this is a big bird. This is a really, really big bird. When you see a snowy owl, you've you seen it. You know you've seen it. It's an event. You it know, really is. It's so beautiful. I want to tell you a story about an owl with my little granddaughter. Tell me. Um, uh, my little granddaughter said to me, um, uh, uh, I, I can make a noise of an owl, and I said, "Oh, I can too." I said, uh, "I said, um, uh, I said, uh, it's a who, who, who," and she said, "No, it's not, Grandma." And she did that sound. That's <laughs> she made. No, it's more like ding, ding, ding. and she. I said, "Well, you know, kids are really smart. They're very, very smart. Kids are really so, smart." Okay, so now. Um, uh, so once they get their first little bird with the mm -hmm. word bird, mm -hmm. uh, then they start getting other little stories yeah, they, and things. Yeah, they, they get a word a week for the next 52 weeks, and I've had really great feedback. Uh, you know who ends up asking for this a lot is grandmothers, because grandmothers oh. really understand the, the, the importance of this. And yeah. it gives them something to do with grand. Can you read one of those? Like, let's sure. just Sure. This is a good word, celestial. Celestial. You know, we, what we're trying to do is get kids to... Um, it, to use a lot of different words, like for example, um, the word prance, like okay. it, as opposed to the horse was walking along, the horse was prancing along. We really want to give them a lot of options because as we know, there's a lot of words for, like the word arid, extremely dry, uh, very little rain, and the word detain. Um, these are just impersonate. And does it give a little example like It a does, it does. Um, and I always use birds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, here's prodigy. This is Penelope, the purple prodigy. She can play the piano. She's practiced her whole life. Um, and she's only six. She's talented and dedicated. She's a piano prodigy. So oh, stuff like my that. goodness. And then we were talking about the word antiseptic and how you should always cover your nose. So kids always love anything having to do with poop or snot or any of those kinds. Oh, of they like <laughs> those kind of. Th yeah, that, we can that's get them always to remember funny. for everything. And here's the word temperamental. Oh, we, I want that. Uh, one. That's a Wait good a one. That's a good one. Well. When I one. got home from school, my mom said, Drea is in a bad mood today. My cousin Drea is temperamental. I'll read one more line. Mm -hmm. Sometimes she gets angry for no reason, and you have to be careful what you say to her. She is moody. I am always careful of what I say to Drea. You know what? Well, I'm temperamental for sure. I certainly am. There you go. You're not temperamental. You're passionate. You're passionate. I'll take that word. Yeah, that's the word. I wonder if we have passionate you know, there. Something instead of salty, brine. Brine. Every kid should know the word brine. And reprimand, everybody can kind of relate to that. And instead of cat, it's feline. And we have them in different age groups, too. It's um, pre-K, oh. kindergarten, first and second. So that's a group. And then third, fourth, and fifth. And then sixth, seventh, and eighth. Yeah, and so we, it's, it's different. And somebody said to me, so... Who did you consult to come up with these? Yeah, that words? was my next question. And how did you formulate which age group and all? I'd love to be able to tell you that I went to an incredible source, but I went to the grandma brain. 
the grandma brain knows, I know, because I've had kids and grandkids, I know what I want a kindergartner, first and second grader to be using, third, fourth, and fifth. So I, I chose the words. And when I went into Ansonia School, and the Ansonia School, the teachers in Ansonia are phenomenal. They yeah. are w just some of my favorite people in the world. And um, when I showed them the words, they said, actually, for a person who wasn't consulting anything but your grandma brain, you're absolutely right on. And those are the way that they break down the vocabulary words, too, is K, 1, and 2, 3, 4, and 5, and 6, 7, and 8. So I came up with that out of my head, and, and uh, it, it turned out to be quite accurate. So I was and, happy. And, and that, that's, that's great. I mean, uh, uh, to ha because I'm lo when I met you, mm -hmm. uh, I said, how did she get this inspiration? Uh, and of course, um, you were a lot of fun. Uh, I, I, was, fun. I was at an appointment mm -hmm. where uh, she was the technologist there, mm -hmm. and, and we, of course, struck up a great immediately. conversation. Immediately. Uh, immediately. There was no doubt about the fact that we liked to communicate. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had such fun. And then I learned about this, mm -hmm. and I told you about the show, and it was a Thank perfect you. match. It was Thank a you. perfect was match. Perfect. Um, now, how did you get all this written? Uh, there's some cute stories you talked about mm -hmm. that come with the the through the mail, and um, uh, you mentioned your sister. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of coffee involved in this because once I took on this project, it took on a life of its own. And I think on a real personal note, my kids are raised. My kids are out of the house, and I miss them. Yes. Like if it were up to me, I'd be giving them a bath again. So I'm the little the, birds yeah, flew. That that yeah my. I had an empty nest, and somebody actually mentioned that to me. I said, Terry, you've actually filled up your nest again with actual birds. And I, she said, this, this, it's really kind of ironic. Um, but my kids are, are older. One of them is a nurse at Yale, and um, the other one is uh, as working as a mechanical engineer over in Milford. So I get wow. to see them often. Right. But what my older daughter said to me, she goes, good, now you can go bother other people's children. Because they're off on their own. They, they don't need me. They love me, but they don't need me. So um, I get to do something for kids. And that's, I think that the emotional need to reach out to kids and still be part of children's lives. And you know, I've got the grandkids. I bother them now, too. Um, I think that's really where the inspiration came. So I, I, I was up in the, the office, and um, I just came up with all of this, this entire program, and I started printing things out and sending things out and um, telling people as much about it. And then, of course, my sister, her name's Deb. My sister Deb is one of the funnest people I've ever met. I would send her everything I wrote, and because she has her master's degree in English and because she's really smart, she would send it back all red-penned, and she goes, I cannot believe that you made that mistake, Terry. So she has been fixing everything for me. That's right. And it's been nice. It's been really fun to work with her on that. Well, you know, I can relate to that because I grew up... Uh, um, uh, the three most important women in my life were my mother and her two sisters, my Aunt Chris and my Aunt Kay and my mm -hmm. mother, Demetra. And we all lived in close proximity uh, in, the, in, in the same, right next door. And so I saw them every day. And um, my aunts were English teachers. Oh, uh, nice. They were very well educated, uh, Columbia University, University of Texas, Colorado, and then my Aunt Kay later on NYU Law School. Uh, but. Um, not only did they correct my grammar, which still isn't perfect, but most people won't pick up my mistakes. Mm -hmm. I, I get by a little. But not only did they correct my grammar, but they cited me the rule. So <laughs> I, I, I and my aunt Chris was born with a red pencil in her hand. I used to watch her correct papers. Oh so gosh. you know, I understand. You know, they helped. I have to say, they were a pain in the neck at the time. Mm -hmm. But connected with this, I was very happy that they helped me with my communication and my vocabulary mm -hmm. and that I get by better than um, uh, most people or better than some. So, you know, yeah. I'm... I'm um, and I'm you're happy. a talk show host and you're involved in politics and so, yeah, it's worked well for uh, you. Well, yes, I am in the same way that you're enjoying this. Mm -hmm. I went back to politics because I love it. It's mm -hmm. exciting for me. It's, it's very... It's very difficult to stay a nice person in mm -hmm. politics. It's very difficult. Politics does try uh, that part of your um, personality. It does, uh, in fact, um, make you dig into yourself morally and, and try to keep mm -hmm. the high road. Very hard to do in a political atmosphere, but I find it a challenge, and I find it a, a way that I can use my communication skills. But. And I'm you get to make a difference. I'm sorry, I interrupted you, but you get to make a difference. And that's, isn't that kind of what we're all here to do, is well, make a difference? Well, you know, I, I, I try to do that mm -hmm. on a very small level. Um, 
local politics is wonderful. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's 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 a, a slight shadow of what happens on the state and and uh, federal level, but uh, nevertheless, it's it's still there. You mm -hmm. you really have to have. It's not for the faint of heart. Yeah. You have to have a thin. Uh, you can't have a thin skin, and you have to be able to know when to stand up for yourself and when to not say anything. You have to have good mm -hmm. judgment. But getting back to the little birdies, the birds. which are much much happier. I hope the little birds aren't political. They probably <laughs> are out in the wild. I mean, like like the blue jay. No, the here. blue jay is a bully. Yes, well, he's a little bit of a bull oh, jay. Yeah, he, will, he will scare away other birds from the seed. Absolutely. Whereas the um, chickadee is actually um, is the bird that will share and let other birds, even of different of a different species know where the food is. Which, do we have a chickadee? The chickadee is down here. Can I show you the chickadee? I want to see the, is it okay. time for the chickadee? It's time for the chickadee. I okay, think. I don't um, want to have the chickadee make her, his her, or her, 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 de her de debut. debut before her time. This is Dee Dee the chickadee. And uh, this wonderful, fun vocabulary pro project, um, I'll tell you a personal story. Uh, okay. My, my brother, died when I was 10. He was 16. He died very suddenly. He was ill and then three weeks later he was gone. So it Just was... Just like that. Yes. It was the devastation in our family. I have a great, great family, but we stumbled and crumbled. And I don't sure. think that we... Um, communication was not our best thing at that time. And I think for me as a 10-year-old, it was very important to not upset anyone. Don't make anyone angry. And since I'm an adult now and I've done a lot of work about grief, and, and really studied about grief and explored this. Um, as a child, being encouraged to not upset anybody can create all kinds of anxiety later in life. Holding it in. Right, right. So for me, the ability, the language of healing was something to give to children. So I wanted to take my experience and turn it into something very positive for children that are going through the death of a loved one and going through that journey of grief. So I came up with the Healing Chickadee. And the healing chickadee shows up, and this is what I love about people. You gotta love people. There's a guy named Rich Case. Rich Case owns, it's called One Source Printing. And he and I met, and I told him about my project with the healing chickadee very early on, and he said, well, how do you send that out? And I said, well, I send it in a box, and, blah, blah, blah. and he developed a box that I, I cover this with craft paper, and I send it out, and then it pops up into Oh my goodness! A really, bir a birdhouse. Oh, and we send my it. Bird house. Isn't that cute? And we send this out white, so that children can decorate it themselves. And it turns into this this birdhouse for and kids. It already has the little hole. It in already it. has the hole. That Rich did this. I love Rich. Oh He's my awesome. Gosh. And then he donated some of these to me because everybody's everybody like Wild Republic has donated some birds. At times there was a guy named Mr. Uline. I don't know if you've ever seen Uline. Um, they do a lot of boxes. I sent him a letter and I said, could you help me out? And, and he donated boxes. People really, when it comes to children, will, will do what they can, especially children that are going through the grief process. So this, this shows up for a child, and in there um, is a little chickadee, and we'll bring her out in a minute. Okay. But there's also a little letter, again, with the, with the scrolled up idea. A there's little a, a, letter. A little letter, and my sister. I gotta give kudos to my sister. She's a poet. And, and it, it's... Oh, please. It's, will you read it? I will. Okay. Um, and it's, it's specially designed for the child. It has the child's name on it. And it says, I'm your little chickadee, and I'm here to talk about healing by giving you the words you need to express your feelings. So tap on the top and open the lid up wide. Lift me out gently and place me by your side. As you can see, my house is plain and lacking any style. But with some windows and a door, it will make us smile. Add some shrubs and some flowers. Make the colors bright. Add some tender love and care, and that will make it right. You'll meet my friends, the Tweethearts, a flock of loving birds. And through the year, we'll bestow on you the gift of healing words. I'm here to keep you company when you're feeling blue. And every month for a year, a tweet heart and letter will come to you. Aww. Isn't that sweet? So a child gets this, and inside, it's fun. They've got instructions on, on how to do it. But um, the little bird shows up. There's also a letter for parents. So the little chickadee shows up, and there's a nesting in there. I chose not to put the nesting in because I thought it would make a mess in your studio. Oh, that, it's, there's nesting. So it has there. a little nest, even. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. And a letter to the parents, and then also for the children, and my sister did this too. I love my sister. Um, the Healing Chickadee, and, and it's an introduction. And again, there's, there's more poetry. I won't read the whole thing to you, but 
it's Fiona Flicker. Basically, we're letting the kids know who's going to show up for them oh, for the year. Introducing the, the, exactly. the birds that are going to yeah. be coming. There's Melody the Meadowlark, as we talked about. She's got a really, really sweet song. And there's Pete the Painted Bunting, and there's Archibald and Raina Robin, and um, Gert the Goldfinch, and JJ the Blue Jay. We got Toots the Hummingbird. You can see she's got um, high heeled shoes on. She's very fashionable. Yes, um, I, and she I, I, doesn't I, I'm attached to her. <laughs> she's great. And then we've got Marty the Purple Martin, and Dr. Bonita. She's a mountain bluebird. She's really more likely to um, prescribe long walks in the woods and hugs more so than, okay. than medication. Um, but that's where kids can go to, to get some help. And Kenny the Cardinal, and then the final one is Grandpa Sage, the Snowy Owl, and he talks to the kids about acceptance. And then more of my sister's poetry. If you send me an email, I can, um, re I can give you all the poetry that my sister's done. It's now, really now wonderful. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. That, mm -hmm. that, what, what, what happens to the blue jay? How does he get presented? Um, the well, little bully bull okay. jay? Well, when, when they get the original box, they get their first love letter because this is a love letter from the Tweet Hearts. Oh. And every love letter, a, a, a letter comes with each bird. And it's about the bird. It's got the story of oh. Dee Dee the Chickadee oh. and her grandma Lovebug dies. And it's the, really the story of how the Tweet Hearts show up for her and her grandpa Sage, he's the snowy owl, and how and they get... And it goes on, each yeah. little animal, uh -huh. and each so little bird. Each little bird. So for example, um, one of the things that happens for kids is they get angry. And, and when when someone dies, that anger, they don't know what to do with it. So when this shows up, the, the story is about, about that particular bird, and then there's an activity that goes with it to help the family heal so that the children have a way of expressing this. And then page three of every one of these love letters is about the real-life Audubon bird. Because oh. I really think that when a child is grieving or when a child's going through anything, if you want a child to talk, taking them for a walk out in nature looking for a robin, identifying robin, you're going to get a child to talk much more so. Therapy's great. There's a lot of ways to get kids to talk. But this was, I designed this whole program thinking about what I needed as a 10-year-old. What would have helped me? What would have helped my family? And that's how I came up with it. And, and, and page four is just a little affirmation, feel it to heal it, you know, and then yeah, there's a little yeah. something that they're thinking about. So there's 12 of these that show up, that show up with each one of the birds. and. Ter Terry, that's brilliant. And, I, and you know what comes to mind as I'm hearing you speak? Tell me. That, that, the, that what happens to children also happens to adults. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because, because um, when my son was hurt in his accident, brain injured, uh, there was a grieving process mm -hmm. there, and still one that goes on. And as, as, as much as this is geared toward children, mm. The messages are adult messages also. Uh, uh, there are so many adults out there that, and I think if you live long enough, you have a lot of things that you grieve about mm -hmm. uh, that come along in life. Now there are some lucky people that remain relatively unscathed, uh, where they have, they don't have huge crises, but they, but we all do have something in our life. Yes. And and um, I have to tell you, just holding the chickadee. Is it's making me feel a lot better. It's what kids love these birds. They really do love the birds, and they, they bring such a strong and wonderful message. And I've the feedback from parents. I got an email the other day from a woman. One of the um, one of the birds talks about ritual. And this this wonderful woman, she's got three other children, and, and their six year old son Isaac died. So she said it's, you know, the kids are tr they're holding up well, and we're holding up well. The idea of holding up well is kind of overrated. I think. One of the things that's really helpful is to sit on the couch and just cry and yes. just be available for one another. So um, she told me that when, when the newsletter, when the letter came in, the, the Tweet Heart Love letter about the word ritual, she said it was a really great opportunity to talk about the funeral. She goes, I realized I had never talked about the funeral and how they experienced it and what they remember about it. And there's something about implicit memories and explicit memories. When a child has an explicit memory and they are able to talk about it, they're able to process it and they're able, and, and especially when they get support with that, because otherwise sometimes it becomes an implicit memory and you end up overreacting to something later in life that really has to do with emotional you know, hurt or pain from a long time ago exactly that went right. unrecognized. That's exactly right. Uh, would you say that this fits in with uh, children uh, of a divorce or uh, yeah. things like that? Yeah. There's some grieving there, I suppose. Absolutely. And, and, and some, some anger and 
like mm -hmm. that. Yes. I originally wanted to make this, because um, when I came up with Word Bird Delivers, really the idea was to, to meet children in a, in a place where they could really use it. But a girlfriend of mine, um, a, a lovely lady, said, you, ne you need to, rather than focus on all of those diverse losses, to stay with something that you know, which was death, especially young death, and, and for me it was a sibling yes. death. Um, she was really the one that encouraged me to stick with just this one. But, but as time goes on, I'm hoping to create other things like for children that are chronically ill, and 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 the different birds. situations. Yeah. Th th so that that would be yes. uh, along the line. I need to live till a long time so I can continue to do these. <laughs> These kinds well, of may things. God grant you many Thank years. You. Thank you. That's really and fun. I'm having I'm having a good time. Now I'm gonna. Can I? Absolutely. Squeeze a little chickadee. The chickadees, and that's one of the most easily recognized. It's this the, is the chickadee, yeah, yeah. and and the chickadee is the most giving of birds. You said. Yeah, and I think it's one of the cutest, and my favorite, which is why it became you know the mascot yes. for this whole. So program. in other words, the word bird. Mm -hmm graduated into also the healing chickadee. Yes. So if, if, if people wanted to um, hear your story, mm -hmm. learn more about what you do and more about the little birds, etc., they could go to thehealingchickadee.com. Mm -hmm. That's easy to remember, thehealingchickadee.com. Mm -hmm. You also are under something, the word bird, the word but bird you could get fun. everything under that same, yeah. if you go there, you'll learn about the word bird, which is for children mm -hmm. learning their vocabulary, and then and then the uh, healing chickadee for children who are grieving the loss of a sibling or that. And there's, there's also a blog on there because having this been part of my education as an adult, um, I did a, a talk about um, a workshop on sibling uh, grief with the um, the bereaved parents USA mm -hmm. and. When I went into the meeting, I got very emotional. This was 250 people whose children ha had, had lost a child. Oh. And I've always seen this from a sibling point of view. And the fact that they invited me, I felt very honored. The people that are there have um, an unspoken kinship. It's a club you oh, never yes. want to be part of. That's and right. The giving and am amazing things that I was learning there, both about my own grief and their grief and my parents' grief, because it was it was very difficult back in the, in the day when I was ten. People would say to me all the time, "How are your parents? How's your mom? How's your dad?" Nobody ever asked the child, "How are, how you? are you?" Yes. And and we learned. I think children learn to keep it all inside and and that can create all kinds of anxiety so I, w I was there and it was just wonderful and they were teaching me things about what to say and what not to say every single person that I know has difficulty when someone dies what do you say I have something on the bird blog that is the 10 best things to say and the 10 worst things to say yes. to people that are grieving and that's and, important oh, words are important it's yeah and what we do is we often try to take our discomfort and displace our own discomfort for example, if someone's sitting next to you and they're crying, you want to make them feel better. That's our natural instinct, and isn't that loving? But actually, what most grieving people need is for you to be fully present, fully present, without words like, he's in a better place, yeah, yeah. or he's better. Or, or it happens for a reason. Right. Oh, uh, my goodness. Right, and my <laughs> you never are given anything more than you can't handle. Oh, yeah, I hate God those those God trite, wanted, trite yeah. things that people mean well, yes. but they don't understand unless they've lived a mm -hmm. tragedy that those are trite. I'm sorry you hit a nerve, although I came close mm -hmm. uh, of that unspeakable thing of losing a child. I came so very close, and in some ways I did lose the mm -hmm. young man I once had yes. when he became brain injured. He's very much the same. That will follow me the rest of my life. And I have people that say, aren't you happy he lived? Well, of course I am happy he lived. But please understand that that's a grief process. I mean, a person with a brain, and brain injury is all over now. It's a big thing with the vet. Mm -hmm. So pardon me for taking the liberty to interrupting oh, you, no. because that's my grief. And, and when I hear people say, aren't you happy he lived? or things happen for a reason, or all that. I learned to have more empathy for others, and I also learned that sometimes the only thing you should say is, I'm so sorry, and, and not avoid the mm -hmm. issue. Absolutely. Because when I went back to work, 
and I don't want the show to be about me, but this goes that. I, I truly understand this. When I went back to work, there were peop most people didn't, were afraid to bring it up. Mm -hmm. I was waiting for someone to say, how are you, Kathy? Is, you know, anything to recognize that what we went and they avoided it. So anyway, please carry on. I'm sorry no. oh, I went no, through no. that. I'm glad that, you, I'm glad that you said that because what we do, we unintentionally negate other people's feelings. That's exactly and right. When we sit with someone and we're just present and we say to them, I hear you. I hear you. Yes. As a, because that's what we want. And, and one of the things I learned from grieving parents is please mention my child's name. Yes. Please. Because especially when you're talking about your own you know, you, you, you're back and it's, it's been a year and people will talk, they're, they're afraid to talk about their own children. They don't want to mm -hmm. ask you about your mm -hmm. child. I mean, and it's really important. So there's, there's a little blog on there because I'm learning too. This is really all part of the learning process. And I also did not know how much healing I still needed and how much um, my brother's death has affected every part of my life. And yes. the grieving process. Yes. I, and, and my siblings as well. What's interesting is my sister and I, Deb and I have had so much fun working on this because it was the death of her sibling too. She's the oldest. And then there was my brother Mike. And then there's my brother Tom. And then I was kind of way behind. Um, I, I think my dad told me that he, I owe my life to the Catholic Church and their stance on birth control. <laughs> Is that what he said? <laughs> he said, if I wasn't Catholic, you wouldn't be here. I go, well, Dad, I, I guess I'm glad you're Catholic. Now. Yes, I, I uh, listen, there, there's some positive things yeah. for, to be said for that. That's right. Yeah. And, and a lot of people do use their faith also. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yes. There's some good lessons in, in whatever faith you choose to, to follow. But mm -hmm. um, uh, no, I, I, you know, you hit a nerve with me because um, mm -hmm. The grieving process just doesn't end. No. Uh, it, it has to end in, if it ever ends in its own time. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can tell you that uh, I, I'm, I'm still in a grieving process about many things in my life, especially mm -hmm. my son who was in the car accident. And I advocate for brain injury survivors in Hartford. And one of the comments I once said to our legislators, went, because I can get a little wild, I'm a, there's an activist part of me. Oh, I'm a I love that. I love I'm, it. A, I'm a bit of an activist. I, I don't believe in violence, but I, I, I can act up in a room and be escorted out. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm not afraid. And uh, we were told that we should exercise a degree of decorum, uh, some of us in the room. And I when I, it was my turn to speak, I said, I have no problem exercising a degree of decorum when you legislators start exercising a degree of caring. Mm -hmm. And that is one of the problems because mostly in politics, what people care about is winning the next election, keeping their power and their egos intact. And I find that, I learned that through the years. But I digress. No, There's okay. a word. No, 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 I digress. No, that's a great Let's word. Let's go back to the, yes, we'll use that word. I digress. And um, uh, Well, I know. admire that you're in politics. I, I can't, politics is tough. I always believe what anybody says. Like, I could never be a cop or somebody that works for them. Because if, if, if a criminal said they didn't do it, I'd be like, oh, he said he didn't do it. Let's let him go. You know yeah, I mean? right. I'm that like, kind of thing. I, I believe whatever anybody, I'm a little bit gullible, I think. But um, well. in politics, you do have to have kind of an eyeball for you have to you in, in a political situation mm -hmm. and uh, it uh, is that um, you have to think uh, you you can't think just with what you're looking at here like mm -hmm. the bird you have to think all around you and out you have to right. think many chess moves ahead mm -hmm. and you have to have an instinct and anticipate and realize that there are spins on everything mm -hmm and that nothing is black and white and that people may say something one day and not say the same thing the next. Otherwise, they wouldn't be human. There's a lot right. of gray areas. Right. I could stand here today and say, I think that I don't like this little bird here and he's no good, and then realize later how wrong I was. And then, you know, uh, you know, sometimes it goes that way. But the grieving part, I think, is what touched my heart the most when we spoke was, mm -hmm. Uh, the healing chickadee, I, that really, I, I think I need the healing chickadee myself, okay? <laughs> we do, we all do, because yes. we, uh, I think life is a series of losses, like you lose your, like I lost my waistline some years ago, that's gone. Oh yeah, I'm, me too. I'm trying to get but, it back, yeah, but, but listen, gone. you look fabulous, God please. Bless you, thank you. you, thank you. I mean you're that sincerely. Sweet. Thank you, you're very sweet. This 55 is 
wow, you know, I, I keep thinking, I'm really in denial. I keep thinking I'm about 34. And Me? Oh, I'm 17 <laughs> in case you didn't know it. My daughter's 32, so I, I don't, I'm just really not, sh time is whipping by, you know what I mean? It's really it does fly, by. Fly, fly by fast. I, I woke up one morning and said, oh my God, I'm 68, soon to be 69. Mm -hmm. This can't really be happening. It can't be. You mean I don't look like an ingenue anymore? <laughs> I don't have long hair to flip around? What happened? I've always wanted long hair. I've always wanted to be one of those girls. I, I never had never, enough I hair know, to I have know. it. Well, I've when I was 22, I did. But you know what? You know what? It's a, it, it's a way. And, and let's talk about that. The word acceptance comes into my mind. Mm -hmm. And that's his, his final word from that, yes. Is mm -hmm. that right? There, it is, you have to come to a point of acceptance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, this is not a show about religion because I, I, I respect people who believe, do not believe in a higher power, mm -hmm. people who, but the common thread through living this life in this world is how we treat one another mm -hmm. and how we come to a, a place of peace within ourselves. Mm -hmm. and, and being angry and challenging that anger inward mm -hmm. instead of using uh, uh, some thoughts and good things to help you to that place of peace will never bring you to a place of acceptance. Right. I, I agree with you completely. And I think one of the reasons that I have done this um, looking at this is when I reached 50 and the kids didn't need me anymore, which, right. is, which is a good thing, you know, because yeah, some that's kids, what you want. some people have adult children that are laying on the couch and, you know, eating their food and borrowing money, you know, mm, <laughs> so that's I right. have kids that are out and paying their own bills and when we go out to dinner, I make them pay. Go, I look at yes. it because I look at it this way, you know, and I gave you the, my life, my health, my youth, you're paying for dinner. I'm a, good I'm for a, you. I'm a, but I think, and besides you can afford it. Yeah, they can <laughs> afford it. They can <laughs> afford it. So um, for, for me, it's about in the time that I'm on this earth, I want to give back and I want to do something that's meaningful. And if I can take the pain that my family went through and help other families with this and give them the words, the language of healing to, to impart with them a strong and rich vocabulary that helps them in their own lives as, as well as society, then, then that's what I want to do. So, so the next step is going to be, you know, for children that are um, chronically ill, there's, there's a couple of things that are, that are in the works. Oh, yes. I, I've had many guests on here of children who have um, uh, unheard of uh, diseases. Mm -hmm. uh, they're ignored because it's, there's not a lot of them. I've had uh, children on here who have had different ailments and things. Um, uh, we don't have enough empathy in this world. Uh, yeah. uh, we are focused too much on our creature comforts, me, me included. Mm -hmm. I have my moments. We're focused too much on our paychecks, and of course, mm -hmm. we need a strong economy for everything else to fall into place. Mm -hmm. But, um, uh, you know, the world's always been like that. Yeah. It's always had that tug of war with each other. So this is... Uh, yeah, but if, if, we, if each of us in our little corner of the world... Do our little it, thing. Yeah, do our little thing. This is because thing. we're all connected, mm -hmm. even to people that we don't even know yet. Right. Look right. how I bumped into you. It's amazing. I, I think that that... And again, we, you know, it's not a, a, a spiritual religious show, but I do believe there's some sort of... You know, people come into our lives for a reason, and we cross paths for a reason. And, right. And I trust that process. Yeah. Can I tell you what the birds? Which I don't know how much time we have, but um, um, uh, we have we have more time. I okay. haven't I haven't had my producer come up and hit and hold up the card that says ten minutes. Wow, that's really. So we're good. We're moving along. We're doing well. So I want to tell you just because this grief program, what I did speaking of spiritual, I sat down and I put a picture of my ten year old self on the desk and I had oh. my cup of coffee and um, I closed my eyes and I thought about who I was and what I needed at that time and that's how I came up with this particular group of bird characters and what it is that they had to say so Dee Dee the chickadee she's our black cap chickadee and she's the hostess um, yep that's her um, and she talks about the word shock because and she when she shows up with the original box the word shock because even if it's a death that's expected um, or a situation that's expected, there's still a degree of shock. And, oh, yes. And um, the entire letter um, is about, what's fun about these is they give you the definition, and then there's a whole story about the word shock and how Dee Dee was shocked and how her friend 
uh, Reign of the Robin helped her out. And then they talk about um, the activities in here. The chickadee idea is meditation because one of the things that even small children can do, and the chickadee talks about how you can meditate, and um, kids as young as three and four years old can be taught, even with a little bell or a little chime, to sit and meditate and listen to their breathing, and that really helps with the shock of things. Mm -hmm. And the black cap chickadee, and then you, so you got a child that's out there looking for the black cap chickadee, and um, the, the affirmation at the end here is allow Mother Nature to nurture you. Allow Mother Nature, nature to, to nurture, nurture you. you. So we give them a little something to think about at, at the end of each that's one. That's a so wonderful that's, thought. Yeah, so that's the one that shows up with, with this and with the letter to the parents because you always want to keep the parent, or and if it's the parent that's that's died, it's also addressed to the guardian because sometimes the it's the parent that, that the child has lost. So. Um, oh, yes, that's a... That's devastating. That's devastating. I have a, a beautiful stepdaughter. She's 39 years old, and when she was 13, um, her mom died. And it has affected her forever and always. And it was interesting because uh, Lisa, she's a beautiful woman, when I showed her all of this, she goes, you know what? You've got this slated for kids 4 to 12, she said, which is kind of a big thing. She goes, but when I was 13, I was pretty tough. She goes, I would have liked this. She goes, I would have pretended that I didn't like it, but I would have looked forward to these he, she it's said, a, "These stupid little birds showing up." She it's, goes, "It's amazing how that you, when you're in that in between age, yeah, yes, yeah. yes." She said, "So I think she goes. You really shouldn't limit it." She goes, "And I think adults actually would would find this very comforting to get a bird every month." Well, you know, I am finding it comforting. Yeah, it's, it's such an uplifting, wonderful idea, and and so helpful to people. I mean, I mean, um, what a gift you've given people. Thank you. Through 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 the the your thoughts and 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 what a wonderful gift, you know it's funny thing, no one wants any any huge crisis than what you experienced as right. a child. But if 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 you many times out of these crises mm -hmm. comes great empathy and great feeling for others and how you can help. Um, to me. That's that's the only how you handle it and how you choose to move forward is probably um, and I and I always hesitate with the word reason the only reason mm -hmm. you make the reason there, there there nobody gets hurt nobody goes dies nobody has terrible things happen because you're supposed to learn a lesson right you know somebody's up there saying you needed to learn yeah. but if because everybody doesn't anyway, but if you do, and you do such a loving thing, that is the beautiful spirit, the peace that heals you mm -hmm. and everyone else around you, which is wonderful. I, I have to say, I, even I can't stop holding this little <laughs> well, bird. Well, I will leave that chickadee with you, absolutely. I get to have <laughs> yes, that is absolutely your chickadee. It's my um, chickadee. I always, I always say that I hope this is something no child ever needs, but I'm honored to send. And, yeah, and that's, that's yes, how I feel about yes. it. Yeah. So, um, can we talk about the other words that these, or do we have time? We have time. We have a, about eight minutes. Oh, okay. So we have a lot of time. So let's tur talk about some of the other okay. birds here. Because this is, and, and again, this was, um, it has been checked out by a psychiatrist. His name is oh. Dr. John Woodall. Dr. Woodall has read all of the materials and, and approved it, and it, it came from my heart and soul. There were two other um, uh, therapists that looked at it as well and thought that it, some of them changed the order of some things, and they gave me some suggestions, but um, it, so it's, so it's you not just something that's, you know, like with the vocabulary, that came from me, but this is really important, and first you want to do no, yeah, you, first you want to do no harm. I wanted to make sure that it was very do helpful. Do no harm. So yes, and Dr. Woodall, He's been very instrumental in the Newtown healing, and um, he and I became friends. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's, he's one of the um, members of the Interfaith Council, and um, so I. But funny you mentioned Newtown, and I'm sure that this mm. is so, uh, something that. Yeah. Well, I. We I never want to invoke the name Newtown for anything other than absolute love and respect, and and it's not to promote a particular thing. But any child from Newtown that would love to have the call me, email me. And it, it goes right. Yeah, out if the you door. if you Absolutely. if you want to uh, find out anything more about healing and any that, sibling you that have it. Affected. The Absolutely. healing chickadee. Yes, yes. anyone. The yes. bird will fly. The yeah. bird will fly. The bird will um, fly. We've got Pete the painted bunting. We talked about that earlier. He talked about rituals. And when I was a kid, nobody talked to me about my brother's funeral. It was after it was over. It was over, and we never discussed it again. And it actually would have been really helpful because I had a lot of memories and thoughts and feelings and, and questions about that that I never got a chance to ask. So um, that's why Pete the Painted Bunting talks about the importance of rituals. And Pete the Painted, painted Bunting. 
He's oh. a really very colorful bird. Pete the Painted Bunting. Mm -hmm. I, okay, Pete. And then um, M Melody the Meadowlark, because she's such a beautiful singer. She talks about um, communication. Where is Melody the Meadowlark? Uh, there she is, the Western Meadowlark. Oh, she talks Melody. about communication, and we teach children in that particular thing that there's a lot of ways they can communicate. They can come up with a song, they can be like my sister and write poems, but there's a lot of different ways that they can communicate their thoughts and feelings, and we encourage the whole family to do that. Um, Toots, your favorite, the hummingbird, she tackles the subject of denial. And even children that are very young can understand the word denial and how they were like, I can't even believe this happened. Like, I, after I, my brother died, I, th I, I, couldn't, I couldn't believe he wasn't coming home. I'm going to make believe if it didn't happen. Yeah, yeah, and kids, you know, reality gets a little bit mixed up, and especially when you're just 10, because my other siblings were a little bit older and they understood a little bit more. So she's the, the bird, of this, this one? The so it's the hummingbird, yep. Denial. Mm -hmm. And we have Kenny the Cardinal, and he talks about um, uh, sadness, and, and oh. sadness is a very important one, and how we really have the ability and the right to all of our feelings, and our sadness, we can honor that wherever it comes out, and, and furthermore, it gives children permission that other people can be sad too, because when, when, if I would say something and my dad would cry or my mom would cry, I would, I would get quiet, so we really help children understand that tears doesn't mean forever. We're, oh. Um, no, well, no, that's okay. uh, we're, we're distracted we're, no, because, we're moving, my, no. well, I always like to speak of Wayne, my engineer, my husband, He's has wonderful. told me we Thank have you, five Wayne. minutes. Okay, Thank so you, Wayne. I'm, I'm moving quick, but these You're are fine. so fun. Let's go through um, this. Fiona Flicker talks about um, uh, fear. Where's Fiona Flicker? Fiona Flicker, I love Fiona. She's adorable. Oh. Um, then there we have siblings, um, Archibald and Raina Robin, and they talk about, this is my favorite one, discombobulated. Discombobulated. Isn't that a great word? Because my, I was very discombobulated. The whole family was. Um, Gert the goldfinch talks about um, uh, uh, regret. This is Kids Gert. can understand regret. And JJ the blue jay talks about anger. And anger. Dr. Mo Bonita, she's a beautiful mountain bluebird. She writes about um, um, kindness um, and uh, laughter and the importance of gentle hugs. Marty the purple martin, he has a very important job. He talks about forgiveness. And one of the most oh. important things in the world, in life, is the ability to forgive ourselves and others, and he talks about that. And then there's Grandpa Sage, the snowy owl. He brings it all together. He's the last one that shows up every year, and he talks about the word acceptance. 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 And we did mention that word, didn't yes, we? Yes, we did. And there's one more thing I want to tell you about. I've got something coming up very exciting, and it was born out of this. It's a children's television show, and it's teaching children mindfulness techniques and the power of meditation and contemplation and, and as opposed to looking outside themselves and because we've got such a technologically rich um, culture to be able to sit quietly with themselves and accept themselves. To say nothing, to be quiet. Yes, yes. We've got technology all mm -hmm. around us. Mm -hmm. Many, many, uh, I've heard that before. Mm -hmm. Sometimes quiet is the mm -hmm. best thing. And it's called Harmony's House in the Soulful Forest. And Harmony's in, House. In the Soulful Forest. And the, the only way to get into the Soulful Forest is through the Gratitude Garden, because we know that gratitude changes everything. And there's a field of forgiveness. There's all kinds. And, and it's populated by different birds and characters. We've got a ladybug named Melody. And we have um, David Friedman is a Disney composer and um, Broadway conductor. And he's writing the music for this. And we've got, it's, re it's just extraordinary. I, it's just extraordinary. You Ordinary. You are extraordinary. Isn't this fun? Can, Isn't this fun? can they? Can we hear more about that you TV get, yep. by um, going to uh, the Healing Chickadee, chickadee and you'll find out about Bird Word, the yes. Healing Chickadee, mm -hmm. and, and the upcoming TV. Mm -hmm. That's that's. I I urge everyone to please please do that. Um, we we've still got in, in TV time. We still got a lot of time. Probably okay. about four more minutes. Well, I can show you. When it comes to the television show. I read this book, life-changing book. It's called The Whole Brain Child, 12 Revolutionary Strategies to Nurture Your Child's Developing Mind. And um, myself and, and my um, co-creator, Christina Connors, she's an amazing singer and, and a producer. She and I have been working on this. And the inspiration, we um, have used this. And Goldie Hawn has um, something called the Mind Up Connection, and it's for school. This is for home, and this is for school. But basically, we're teaching and this is a New York Times bestseller, right. um, we're, we're teaching children the same thing, which is um, brain-focused strategies for learning and living. And they have found that especially in, in classrooms where children are having a harder time sitting still, ADD, when, when you 
hit a little gong and you have them sitting down and they have that quiet moment of of reflection and and in the soulful forest they have a reflecting pond and um, they have mindful mountain and we've got the well nest clinic where dr bonita is the <laughs> that is so so you have tied in everything together it's been this so much fun and i th i think that it all sort of that little idea that i had back in 2011 for Word Bird Delivers and, and increasing children's vocabulary has just, and, and I leave it, myself it, open to whatever comes. It's just grown like a tree. It has, it has. Uh, we have one more minute. Okay. So this has just grown like a tree. Mm -hmm. And what I'm going to say, Terry Murphy, I am so happy that because I needed a test, mm -hmm. I met up with you. Thank you. And uh, I'm going to tell everyone, uh, if my producer can make sure we, we have this on camera, we do. Yep. TheHealingChickadee.com. TheHealingChickadee.com. And everything we talked about today, mm -hmm. the information is there. And can I say that I was among some of the very first to interview you before your TV show goes <laughs> goes. National. Public, national, national. Yes, okay. national. You'll will. be as po more popular than Howdy Doody, there you which go. was my favorite show and when you, I was growing up. And you just up. dated yourself. Yes, I did. <laughs> well, listen, I don't mind. I carry, I carry it like a badge. I'm yes, 68 yes. years old. You know, okay, I'm with okay. You. I'm a, I'm, I'm the beginning of the baby boomers. They're mm. going to want to kill me off pretty soon because there's too many of us. But, all right. So what I'm going to say is thank you very thank much, you, uh, Terry Murphy uh, from thehealingchickadee.com. This has been uh, fun. Thank you for taking the time to come to the show. Uh, I'm Kathy Johnson, and I'm going to say uh, good evening, and I'm going to wish, wish you a better tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thank you. That was so fun.